what, what we do is we provide compliance first. So we help you comply with um, local, uh, you know, like even in your county, uh, state and federal laws. And we create a comprehensive employee handbook for you. But our main goal and our main job and what we do for our members is we help you solve HR problems. So we, we can actually, within the context of what the laws are, so we have to solve problems in California sometimes differently than we would solve them in, say, Connecticut or South Dakota. Same problem can crop up in every office, but we might have to take a different approach. Um, and, and so we, we use that compliance mechanism first. And then because of our experience, I mean, we take over 12,000 calls a year from more than 3,000 dentists. So we're also learning about what's going on out there. We take that experience of solving those problems down to the kind of the minutia of giving you options, maybe best ways, a different approach that you didn't know that you could take. Um, and, and then it just kind of blossoms back out from there. So those are the main things that we do. And, and then the, the last thing is, a lot of times, um, dentists and all business people, it's not just dentists, you miss key opportunities to document things and you miss key opportunities within your handbook policies because you don't know what you don't know to protect your practice in a, in a, in a very real um, and substantial way. And so, but, you know, with all of that, uh, we also added in our own proprietary software of which uh, Dr. Block were releasing a new version of it after three years of, of working on, uh, you know, upgrading it. So that's kind of the, that's the really long elevator pitch. So if we were going to the 74th floor, that would be the elevator pitch from, from me on what we do. So with, with compliance and, and, and proper documentation and a proper yep. handbook, how, how does that help uh, the culture of a dental office, would you say? Well, okay, two things. First of all, I, I can't ask someone else to be accountable. And if I'm not accountable, like I can't ask you to, to be on time if I'm not on time. That's a, that's a good example of co-accountability. Uh, but, it, you know, overall, if you're not in a good place, you're vulnerable when it comes to employment law and understanding how you can solve problems. You know, you've got a bunch of gossip going on and people talking about salaries and all sorts of things like that. A good example is, is you, you think you should tell them that they have to shut up about that. And that's actually a violation of federal law. You cannot do that. And so these are the little tidbits that people don't know. So first part of culture is your own accountability and making sure that you're taking care of your employees. And by the way, when I say your own accountability, it creates policies that actually protect you. So, uh, uh, Eric, again, I like to give a little example. That policy in your handbook that tells people they have to tell you about a problem like sexual harassment so that you can do something about it is actually a really strong protection for your practice when it's written properly. On the, on the other side, you, you use the word culture. I will say this, Eric, if you don't create culture like all of the components, and we could talk about that briefly. If you don't create culture, your team will create a culture for you. And that's what I learned when I had 60 employees is I could never figure out why sometimes things were good and sometimes things were bad. And I was always, I thought, a good leader and a good manager. Everybody liked me. I could be tough if I needed to be. I could let someone go and not go throw up in the alleyway. I could, you know, I could do what I need to do to protect the business. But I would look around me in these swaths over a 15-year period and I go, why is it so hard and bad right now? And then it'd be like, wow, we're doing such a great job here. We're running on, you know, all eight cylinders. And, um, and what I learned years later was that my teams were creating culture and some of the combination of the teams based off of God knows what were creating good culture. And then all of a sudden I would have what we would call the opposite of a good culture and uh, all the problems that you have with that. And, uh, and so I think the biggest lesson is, is if you don't control your culture with the components that make culture, and it's, it's not just your core values someone else will do it for you. 